besides that young gentleman there, I guess I'm the youngest. <laughs> and um, watch out, man. Watch out. Wait, wait, wait. They said, they, well, from learning from my ancestors, they said, I always speak the obvious and state the truth. Uh, I am a product of everything that gentleman spoke about. Amen. The only reason Nat Turner, Harriet Tubman, Michael Max, Martin Luther King are famous is because they stood for what they stood for. Amen. I have that same mind frame. I understand when you have a mission. Your mission is your mission. And God will add to your mission whom he chooses to play with. To ride with you. It's when you go out and try to recruit yourself. It's when you're going to recruit a circle you don't want. The reason we're still here is because our ancestors were strong. Yes, yes. And that's what the youth today is missing. Yes. That link. Yes. That's why they don't respect you all. Mm -hmm. When they see you walking down the street like I did when I was growing up. Mm -hmm. Because the stories were told. told. Amen. You respect your elders. Amen. Amen. They don't understand what you've been through. Yes. See, a child will come home and all they know is the lights is on, the gas is on, the food and come on by the film, right? And ATM day. And how the nerve to get upset when they ask you for something. <laughs> yes. After you done scraped and paid all the bills. Yes. And you yes. tell them no, you can't, can't go to the corner store. How true. See, no one knows the struggle until they're in the struggle. No one respects the struggle until they're in the struggle. And these are the things that I speak about. When God gives you a mission, there's a certain time, a place, and an era. You look at any story in the Bible, it was a certain place, a certain time, and a certain era. Certain things was going on that someone had to come from amongst them and stand out. And it was not a popular position or decision. That's what makes them strong. A lot of us read the Bible like we just read a novel. But if you read the Bible, it gives you your history, but it also gives you your position. It puts you in a lane. When you're dealing with faith, it's like going to school from kindergarten to the first, second, third grade, to junior high, to high school, to college, to grad school, it's called different levels. Some of us will drop out and never come back to faith. Some of us will sell all the way up and become great leaders. Some of us will drop out but return back to school <coughs> after experience. You need the education mm -hmm. to make it in this world. Mm -hmm. And the education is the love of God and the understanding of the commitment. Yeah, amen. See, that's the degree you want. Mm -hmm. You want that diploma. You want to walk across that spiritual stage mm -hmm. with your cap and gown on and your people that you worship with standing in the audience watching you receive that diploma. Mm -hmm. See, that's what you call when your shoulders is up like this mm -hmm. and you not afraid of anything even though you're going through struggle. That's called spiritual swagger. All right. Amen. That's what it's called. It's called spiritual swagger. When you see a man or a woman and they believe in God and they don't, they always got a good thing, worried to say, even though you know they struggle. That's that spiritual swagger. Because I can't bring myself to complain after he woke me up. Amen. That's selfishness. Wow. There's 7 billion people in this world. And I guarantee you, somebody ain't wake up today. Amen. Somebody. Amen. 
So I ask myself a question every time I find myself in a difficult situation. If I found out today that I was dying tomorrow, would this problem matter right now? Mm -hmm. And tomorrow is not promised. It's not promised. So that problem will not wear me to death. Because I understand the importance of respecting what he has already given us. Amen. A lot of people truly believe their alarm clock woke them up. <laughs> then take your alarm clock to the graveyard and let it go off. See how many people That's a good one. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> That's God's work. Amen. Anytime God take your soul at night when you sleep and give it back to you in the morning, mm -hmm. he's not done. Amen. So to find yourself complaining about a situation, because he could have had you on those slave ships, but he didn't allow you to be born in that era. See, he didn't allow you to be born in an era where the history had to be made you have to read about. See, he didn't allow you to be born in that era where if you practice your religion, you was prosecuted. Yeah. See, that's why most of us don't have the respect we should have for our religion. Because we ain't have to fight for it. We ain't have to go against our own siblings for it. We ain't have to get, you know, be killed for it or killed for it. See, when something is already established, it's up to you to learn the history and respect it. Amen. <laughs> But when you have to establish it, then you understand the history of it because you are the history of it. That's why when you see people, veterans, that say, when you deal with the flag that's been over in the war, they say, don't let that flag hit the ground. Now, I've never been in the war, so I'm to me, I'm like, man, you tripping. It ain't nothing but the flag. And I done lost my best friends about this flag. I done lost my arm about yes. this flag. Right. And I say don't let this flag right. hit the ground. But well, that's the same thing about your religion. Amen. Don't disrespect my religion. Mm. And that's what a lot of people don't get. Mm. They, they quick to, they don't realize they disrespected it. Mm. Sometimes you can talk to your spouse and they can be in a tone you don't even realize you don't raise your voice. Mm -hmm. You just upset about something. And he or she says to you, don't talk to me like that. <laughs> and you like, like what? <laughs> but really, if someone's telling you you're talking crazy to them, calm down for a minute. They're not just saying that just to say it. Obviously, there's something going on that you're not paying attention to. You have to pay attention to what's going on around you. What's, what's inside you. That first voice you hear, you can always tell God's voice from the devil's voice. God's voice is going to tell you to do the right thing at all times. It's not going to compromise. It's not. The devil is going to tell you to do something that you know in your heart ain't right. But he'll allow you to think of it. Of, of, of something to justify. Yeah. <laughs> see, yeah, I know, but see, if he really did that, see, there's no but sees when it comes to God. When he called Moses, Moses, whoa, burning bush. Huh? Wow. Now, how many of us got faith we can stand and talk to a burning bush? <laughs> right now, we pray all day. We just start shouting and everything. Let God walk through the door right now. You would eat off my seat. Huh? Oh. Moses, take off your sands. You are holy ground. Amen. What make the ground holy? Because of his presence. Because of his presence. Fall down, bow down. Now here's a mission for you. Amen. Go see Pharaoh. Moses said, mind. what? Sin <laughs> error. <laughs> Pharaoh? He's chopping heads, throwing people in jail, <laughs> killing babies. Pharaoh don't care about you, me, and nobody else. <laughs> Go see Pharaoh. All right. mm -hmm. Tell him. Tell him. Let my people go. He ain't even no Uzi. 
Nope. <laughs> Any little tank that we got, we all at war right now, right? We at war right now. God said one thing. We're a walking stick. Free these people. Amen. One man. Here we got millions dying. We can't get along. He went to go see Pharaoh. Walk in there. Everybody's in there during the time Moses walked in the castle. Asking Pharaoh for a favor. Mm -hmm. Oh, great Pharaoh, please spare me some food for my kids. Please give me more, more straw to make bricks. Oh, Pharaoh, bless my marriage here. Oh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh, Pharaoh. He's playing like he's God. Right. <laughs> All of a sudden, steps in Moses. Pharaoh, like, what? Is that Moses? <laughs> Did we want him out of here? Moses ain't come. Baby for nothing. He came with a demand, a command. I got a message for you, Pharaoh. Like, what? So he entertained Moses. Hold up. What are he talking about? Right. He said, free the people. Amen. Free the people. Amen. See, God will give you a simple message, but the task is strong to get it done. The Rev is say, I need y'all to come in and we're going to repaint this whole room. Now that's simple enough. Yeah. But wait till y'all get the paint. <laughs> <laughs> they under their breath, Rev, trip. This is crazy, Rev. But once they get done, they get done. Rev ain't trying to hear that. Get the job done. Yeah, that's, it. <laughs> that's what it is. You get the job done. Yeah. So Moses, he go in there and he tell Pharaoh, let my people go. Yeah, sure. Pharaoh said he must be crazy. <laughs> but we know the story. Mm -hmm. But here's something that we ain't pay attention to. Mm -hmm. When God give you a mission, right? Mm -hmm. He give you just enough intellect, mm -hmm. knowledge, and courage mm -hmm. to carry it through. Mm -hmm. He won't give you what you think you need to get it done. Mm -hmm. He give you exactly what you need to get it done. And whomever he chooses to bring with you, like he gave Aaron, Amen. Moses' brother, because he was a better speaker than Moses was. Sure, you could take Aaron. But Aaron ain't had no powers. He was the comfort that he gave Moses. Amen. Go ahead. When he left with the people, remember now, when they got to the Red Sea, Moses ain't had no boats. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> That's true. Now, now, you have to be a great leader Amen. to have individuals mm. that even though they was in slavery, they was being fed. Yeah. Right? right? They stopped doing what they doing and walked towards the ocean. <laughs> now, if that ain't Jim Jones, <laughs> drink some Kool-Aid, right? Yeah, right. You telling me to walk towards the ocean and they in his ear. Go to the ocean for Moses. Yeah. What you trying to do, Moses? Now they starting to think is Moses crazy? crazy. <laughs> because when he give you a mission, people will doubt you. Amen. They will doubt your sanity. Amen. Because God's mm. mission is not normal. That was amazing. It's not the norm. Amen. Because it was the norm. He would have called all of us. Yes. Amen. Pick and choose who he chooses. Yes, he Got to the Mother River. Mm. There's no boats. Mm. And Pharaoh's breathing down. Right there behind. Mm. 